Hi, right, Ninja Nerds. In this video, we're going to talk about the veins that are going to be draining the structures of the head and the neck. Okay, so we're going to be taking blood from the head and the neck and bringing it down to the right atrium. Okay, so it's going to be kind of be like a, a blood flow, uh, a chart basically. Okay, so starting with the top inside of our actual uh, brain, okay, we have these special structures called dural septa. And dural septa is basically you have two different types of tissue. You have what's called the periosteal layer of the dura mater which is the, the tissue that clings to the bone of the skull. Then there's another one called the meningeal layer. And there's a tiny little space between those. What happens is the meningeal layer and the periosteal layer have a separation point. That, is that, little, that little separation point is lined with endothelial cells. That's called the dural sinus, okay? So dural sinuses are basically veins that are found within the space between the periosteal layer and the meningeal layer of the dura mater. Okay, one of these important ones, it's actually called, uh, found within one of the dural septa called the Falk cerebri. This is actually called the inferior sagittal sinus. Okay, so the inferior sagittal sinus is actually located within the lower part of the Falk cerebri. And again, we'll talk about these uh, meningeal layers and dural septa more within neuro, okay? Another one that's really important, this actually runs within the inside of the skull, right over the occipital bone. This is called the occipital sinus. Okay, so this is called the occipital sinus. All right, so we have an inferior sagittal sinus and an occipital sinus. And this is a small little sinus that's actually going to be located, again, with inside of the skull, right around what's called the internal occipital protuberance. Okay, then there's another one. This one is actually called the superior sagittal sinus. Okay, and the superior sagittal sinus is also running within the Falk cerebri, just a little bit more of the upper part of the Falk cerebri. Now what happens is, the inferior sagittal sinus is gonna empty into a special structure here. And this structure is called the straight sinus. So it's called the straight sinus. Then what happens is, the occipital sinus, the superior sagittal sinus, and the straight sinus all empty their blood into one joined area, some junctional area. We call this the junction or the confluence of the sinuses. So this is called the, I'm going to spell I'm going to put junction or confluence. So it could be the junction or the confluence of the sinuses. Okay, so it could be the junction or confluence of sinuses. Then, when the straight sinus, the occipital sinus, and the superior sagittal sinus empty the blood into the junction of the confluence of the sinuses, that then empties into another special sinus. It's gonna be moving within the outer sides, okay? So imagine it's moving like this around the skull, okay? It's moving within the back part of the posterior cranial fossa from left to right, okay? Or from the middle to the outer parts. This is called the transverse sinuses. So it's going to empty into these structures, which are called the transverse sinus. Okay, and there's two of them. They're paired. The transverse sinus is then going to empty into another one that is kind of takes on an S-like shape. Okay, it's within the, what's near the actual jugular foramen, and it's getting ready to empty into that little jugular root there. This one here is called the sigmoid sinus. This one here is called the sigmoid sinus. Now, before we go into the next thing, we need to talk about something else. What are some of these other sinuses? Because there's so many different veins within inside of the actual uh, the skull, basically. So let's come over here for a second. There's another vein, which is within the orbital cavity. Okay, it's within the orbital cavity. This guy is actually called the ophthalmic vein. So this is called the ophthalmic vein. The ophthalmic vein, which is in the orbital cavity, can drain into a special structure located more posteriorly right around where the sphenoid bone is. There's a special structure that we've talked about this many times in neuro. It's called the cavernous sinus. Okay? It's called the cavernous sinus. So the ophthalmic vein can empty into the cavernous sinus. There's actually another one near the nose and a little bit of the lips too that actually can empty some of the blood into the cavernous sinus. And this is called the facial vein. So the facial vein can also give off some little branches into the cavernous sinus from like the lips and the nose. Okay. 
There is one other one, I'm not going to mention it here, but it also is a very big contributor. It's called the sphenoparietal sinus. Okay, so that's another really, really important one. We didn't mention in this one, uh, but again, cavernous sinus also can receive a third input from what's called the sphenoparietal sinus. Okay? Now, what happens is the cavernous sinus can give off two little branches. Okay? One of them is going to be called the superior petrosal sinus. So one is called the superior petrosal sinus. Now the superior petrosal sinus is going to empty directly into the sigmoid sinus. But then it gives off another one called the inferior petrosal sinus, which if you guys remember runs within Dorello's canal, all right, which is also runs with another nerve called the six cranial nerve, the abducens nerve. So this guy is going to be called the inferior petrosal sinus. And the inferior petrosal sinus empties its blood into a specialized structure here. And this specialized structure, really, really important one, which is actually going to be coming out through the jugular foramen, is called the internal jugular, and I'm just going to put it here for the sake of it, vein. Okay? So it's going to empty into here what's called the internal jugular vein. Okay, so so far the internal jugular vein has gotten blood from the sigmoid sinus, which gotten blood from all of these structures. It's also gotten that blood from the inferior petrosal sinus. But what about this over here? Well, it looks like it's getting some from the facial vein. But there's another vein that's also emptying into it also. You know the temple? There's a structure here in the temple. It's called the superficial temporal vein. That also is going to be combining with the facial vein to empty into the internal jugular vein. So there's another one here called the superficial temporal and then what the heck, vein. We'll put it in there from now on right here. Okay? Now, facial vein, superficial temporal vein, inferior petrosal sinus, and sigmoid sinus are emptying into the internal jugular vein. Okay, what else empties into the internal jugular vein along the process? So the internal jugular vein is going to move out through the jugular foramen. As it moves out through the jugular foramen, it might pick up some blood from the superficial temporal vein, the facial vein, but it's also going to pick up some other structures within the neck. And these are going to be coming from the thyroid gland. One's just superior and one's middle. That's it. So we have one, which is called the superior thyroid vein, and the other one is called the middle thyroid vein. That's it. Okay? Sweet deal. Now let's pick up some other structures that are coming from a different route. You know there's actually another vein. Don't get this vein confused with the occipital sinus. This is another vein. Okay, it's actually located within the back of the head. It's called the occipital vein. Okay, so it's some, draining some of the structures from the back of the skull. The occipital sinus is a different one. That's the one that's found inside of the skull, within the dural sinus, right? It's a dural sinus. It's inside, in between that meningeal layer and the periosteal layer. This occipital vein is located on the back part of the skull here, okay? On the outside of the skull. So this one's actually called the occipital vein. Now the occipital vein is going to continue to move down. As it moves down, it picks up branches and eventually becomes what's called the posterior auricular vein. So it's going to be moving around the ear. Okay, so it's called the posterior auricular vein. Okay? Now, the posterior auricular vein is eventually going to dump into a nice structure that is going to be a little bit more external to the internal jugular vein. So what do you call this one? External jugular vein. Okay? It's a little bit more superficial in that sense, right? So this is called the external jugular vein, okay? And again, this one is bringing blood from the occipital region, and it's also picking up some blood from the behind the ear and around the ear, and it's emptying into a vein that's going to run around the neck, right over the sternocleidomastoid, okay? It's called the external jugular vein. Another structure is going to be bringing blood from some of the actual uh, upper arm, right? So the appendages, right? So the upper limbs. This guy it's going to be also picking up blood from other structures besides that too, but it's called the subclavian vein. And this gets its name because it runs right underneath the clavicle, right? So subclavian vein, as it's moving this way to dump the blood into another structure called the brachiocephalic vein, it's picking up blood from the external jugular vein, but also picks it up from another structure. This structure is bringing blood from some of the parts of the... Uh, from that vertebral basilar system. You guys probably remember that one. These are called your vertebral veins. And the vertebral veins will empty the blood into the subclavian veins. 
right? Now, we're obviously treating this as one side. It doesn't matter which one I pick. I could say right or left. It doesn't matter. But we're just, remember, we're treating everything as one side right now. The subclavian vein and the external jugular vein and the vertebral veins, right? So the external jugular will dump into the subclavian. The vertebral will dump into the subclavian. But then what happens is something very beautiful. The subclavian vein and the internal jugular vein come together. When they come together, they form a special structure here. It's called the brachio cephalic vein. Now, to make sure that we really understand this, we have the subclavian vein, right? Let's pretend that this is the right subclavian vein for a second. Right subclavian vein, and let's pretend this is the right internal jugular vein. If the right internal jugular vein and the right subclavian vein fuse together, it forms the right brachiocephalic vein. You're also going to have the left side. So imagine for a second that there would be a left internal jugular vein and a left subclavian vein that come together to form the left brachiocephalic vein. The left brachiocephalic vein and the right brachiocephalic vein fuse together and then form another structure here. And this is called the superior vena cava. Okay? So this next one is called the superior vena cava. Okay. So the brachiocephalic veins, right and left, fuse together, form the superior vena cava. Then the superior vena cava empties that blood into this last structure here, which is called the right atrium. And that would end that systemic circuit. Okay? All right, you guys ready? Let's do a recap. Here we go. Inferior sagittal sinus is going to empty the blood into the straight sinus. Occipital sinus will empty the blood into the junction or the confluence of the sinuses. The superior sagittal sinus will empty the blood into the junction or confluence of the sinuses. And the straight sinus, which was drained from the inferior sagittal sinus, will also empty into the junction or the confluence of the sinuses. From that junction or confluence of the sinuses, that will empty into the transverse sinuses. The transverse sinus will empty into the sigmoid sinus. And the sigmoid will empty into the internal jugular vein. <clears throat> now, remember the internal jugular vein moves through the jugular foramen. At this same time, there's also blood that's going to be getting drained from this area over here, too. Remember the ophthalmic, which is draining uh, the parts of the orbit? The facial vein components, which are going to be around the nose and also around the lips. This will drain into a big structure called the cavernous sinus, which is situated within the sphenoid bone near the cella turcica. Now, cavernous sinus also receives another big supply of its venous blood from what's called the sphenoparietal sinus. Okay. Now, the cavernous sinus is drained by the superior petrosal sinus, which empties into the sigmoid sinus. It's also drained by the inferior petrosal sinus, which runs through Dorello's canal with Abducens nerve and dumps into the internal jugular vein. Then we said some of the facial vein that's not from the lips and from the nose, it'll continue to keep draining blood from other parts of the face and combine with the superficial temporal vein, which is draining the temple area, and empty into the internal jugular vein. Again, as the internal jugular vein continues to descend downwards, it picks up blood from the superior thyroid veins and the middle thyroid veins. Then, the occipital vein, which is different from the occipital sinus, this is draining the out outer structures of the skull, so, so like some of the muscles in this area. The occipital vein will empty into what's called the posterior auricular vein, and the posterior auricular vein will empty the blood into what's called the external jugular vein. The external jugular vein will empty his blood into the subclavian vein, which is bringing blood from other structures like the upper limbs, right? So your arms. The subclavian vein will get blood from the external jugular vein. It'll also pick up some blood from the vertebral veins and combine with the internal jugular vein to form the brachiocephalic vein. There's two brachiocephalics. We said that let's pretend that for a second this was right and this was right. That would give you the right brachiocephalic. The same thing would be happening on the left. You'd have a left brachiocephalic. When the right brachiocephalic and the left brachiocephalic come together, they form what's called the superior vena cava. The superior vena cava will then empty that blood. What type of blood is it? Deoxygenated blood, okay? So carbon dioxide rich, oxygen poor blood with a lot of metabolic waste products too. That blood from the superior vena cava will be emptied into the right atrium. Then from the right atrium, you already know the story, it'll go into the right ventricle and be pumped through the pulmonary circuit. All right, engineers, so that pretty much covers all the veins that are going to be draining the structures like the head and the neck. I really hope it made sense. I hope you guys did enjoy it, and I hope it helped. I really do. If it did, please hit the like button, comment down in the comment section, and please subscribe. All right, engineers, as always, until next time.